Testing, testing, one, two, three. Is my wire, that's my mic work. <clears throat> All seems well. Uh, I don't know how long the stream is going to be. Um, uh, there's a lot of the series I'm going to be talking about. Uh, admittedly, I don't remember that much about uh, but memory like a fish. Doofy, straight over from Twitter. Thank you very much. Ugh, thank you, my friend. I'm forgetting how to speak. Um, I think it's just me and you for now. Oh, wait, I've got three viewers. That's cool. All right. Uh, anybody else who's watching, feel free to say hi in the chat. Um, you know, drop some fat recommendations or fat beats, whatever you want. And um, hope you're all having a good uh, time this uh, Sunday afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you are. Zach, hello. Thank you for joining. Uh, I've got a couple of series to talk about today. These, these are just things that I've read in, in like the last three, two or three months. Um, some are more hazy in my memories than, than, than others. Um, some series that I've really enjoyed, some others not so much. Some series that I've continued, some series that I've dropped. So a nice little bit of variety. Uh, I've got a couple of shonen, seinen, gekiga, independent old and new manga so a nice eclectic mix of uh of things to talk about hopefully talk about rather and uh we'll talk about the first thing that's on my list here uh that was witchcraft works volume one i only have volume one and look i got it for one pound one pound sterling uh, on sale and uh, uh yeah it was it basically it's it's like a it reverses the trope of the damsel in distress. Uh, you've got the witch, you know, mommy milf on the cover here, and, and um, you know, chicken little over here is, is the uh, titular damsel in distress. And it's basically like a high school sort of setting um, where this little damsel here doesn't know that he's got like the ultimate power, the uh, ultimate, you know, magical powers, and it's up to his guardian here who by the way the names escape me i don't remember what they were called it's this guardian witch here who has this all protect him from all the other forces who are trying to exploit his powers um i guess it's supposed to be comedic in that respect but there's not really that much comedy to be, to be had uh and i really didn't enjoy it i just thought it was really lackluster and uh painfully average i mean the artwork's quite nice like especially with the color pages and if you're into this kind of thing then um uh yeah no go for it um but i definitely won't be continuing with this considering that uh it's still ongoing and i think it's nearly 20 volumes uh i, I don't have the patience to commit to waiting for a series to get good or not and i have admittedly i haven't read any reviews or or really researched generally how people feel about this in the community um you can see a little bit more artwork there if that appeals to you then cool fair enough um it just didn't tickle my fancy uh and it, it relied from what i remember of it at least it relies heavily on the trope of you know the girl you know is serious and everyone else thinks it's amazing she's amazing and you know he he gets shit from everyone else because you know he's just mr average and you know why is he getting all of the big girl attention you know it's it's one of those things where it's got the cookie cook cookie cutter characters that you've seen in every other similar sort of series before uh so it's just it's just the the volume one was just the epitome of mediocre it just that didn't really do anything for me um and therefore no reason to continue it um there's nothing in here at all that i remember even just flipping through it now that sparked my interest that made me feel that oh you know something there's something here that if i allow this to gestate it might become more interesting um in in the future there's nothing in here at all there's no seeds sown that made me feel that you know something i'm going to persevere with this it was just boring um uh, okay uh so that's dropped um another series um that i actually watched the anime for this uh originally years ago and re i remember really enjoying the anime for all the wrong reasons 
Um, but the manga, I don't know if it's just because I've matured, I've grown up, you know, I've my changes, my, my tastes have changed. I, I don't know. But this is another series that I've eventually, you know, I've, I've, I've dropped. Um, <laughs> I was reading the comments, do you think? Uh, can I toss a one pound manga? Absolutely, man. Bro, I remember the, the best, just a little segue here, the best deal on a manga I've ever got, still to this day, and I still can't beat it, was coming across 20 volumes, brand new, uh, of Blade of the Immortal for one pound each. So I got two thirds of the entire series of Blade of the Immortal for 20 pounds, brand new, retail, at, at my local comic book store. I, I could not believe my luck. Uh, considering there's a lot of those single volumes are like you know 15 16 17 pound a pop you know at recommended retail price and it's dark horse so there's like that extra inflated sort of cost uh damn i was i was lucky as hell that day i just remember being absolutely elated um and i should have done a video on that back in the day it's probably in um uh it's probably one of my old um manga pickup videos from god not how long uh oh i'm having mic issues um i don't know why but i have such a bad aversion towards stories based on fairy tale tropes and yeah me too because that that's kind of what they rely on like fairy tales you know sort of folklore tales and things like that they're they're already pre-written um and there's always already a a template there from time of memorial isn't there? so you know modern interpretations of that unless it's a complete deconstruction like for instance you know, like the game what's it called uh, a telltale game that sort of deconstructs the you know fairy tale characters i can't remember what it's called that, that spot's pretty good anyway um okay you just hit mute that's fine <laughs> uh yeah do you feel basically what i was saying if you didn't hear um the, the best deal on a manga i ever got was uh, uh 20 volumes of blade of the immortal so basically two-thirds of the entire series for one pound per volume so one third of the entirety of Blade of the Immortal cost me twenty pounds, brand new. So that's still the best deal of manga I've ever got. Anyway, end of segue. Uh, moving on. Uh, so this series that I started it is something that I've dropped. I really like the anime, but the manga not so much. And that is uh, Watamote. I don't know why it's called Watamote. That's like the Japanese version, shortened version or something. Yeah, Wolf Among Us. That's it. Yeah. Um, I didn't know it was based on the comics. Cool. But yeah, uh, uh, no matter how I look at it, it's you guys' fault. I'm not popular about this uh, creepy looking um, girl, uh, Tomoko Kuroki, and uh, basically follows her daily struggle in high school, trying to make friends. Um, she assumed a little bit. Uh, uh, the words escape me. She, she, before she went to high school, she was um, basically a hikikomori, uh, a shut-in who spent or learned all of her social interactions through playing um, like visual novels, like dating sims and things like that, and assumed that the experience that she gained from that would transfer over into the real, the real world. Uh, that's not the case, and it just basically uh, the, the comedic uh, elements bounce off of the um the, the the fails i guess you could say because each chapter is called fail rather than chapter it, 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 each of the slip ups that she makes socially just how socially awkward she is uh, anxiety towards you know sort of being in a classroom full of other people and and her absolute uh despair and um you know despair at awkward cringy situations that she puts herself in uh as well as her uh, animosity towards her peers um, you know, because like, why are they popular and she's not, sort of thing. Uh, and I found it just more depressing than anything. Um, you know, one one thing I didn't like was like how the school teachers sort of don't pick up on, you know, clearly this problem kid. Like, I just didn't see the comedy in it at all. And I know it's supposed to be like a whimsical, light-hearted, you know, oh, this is so cringe, super cringe. But I don't know, man. I just yeah, I, I, if I went to a school where the teachers were that oblivious to you know like kids who are struggling to fit in or have clear like 
anxiety, like she's clearly mentally unwell. And you know, the teachers are just saying things to her like, "Well, you don't have any friends. Why don't you just make some?" You know, it's fucking, it, fucking, oh man, it was just, it was frustrating to read. And it, this is, it's just not like cringe humor. Is just not my kind of humor. Um, I get, I feel more second hand embarrassment than than I do, you know, like actual. You know, I don't get the funnies from it. You know, <laughs> it was just, it was lame and and not very well written. Personally, I feel. Uh, Odang, I also remember liking Watsumote. I always wanted to check out the manga, so to hear it doesn't. Yeah, it, it just it doesn't for me. Um, and it's it, it relies on the same sort of punchlines every single time. Like each chapter deals with like a specific sort of day or or a specific a specific plan that uh, Tomoki has to try and boost her popularity and obviously ends up failing. So it's just the same punchline over and over and over and over again, rinse and repeat. And up to the point that I got to volume five, it tried to introduce like another character who's even more socially awkward than Kuroki, T Tomoki, whatever her name is, to, to try and offset um, her, you know, her own cringe and sort of boost her, uh, you know, sort of character growth. It just, it didn't really work um so yeah but needless to say i've dropped it and again considering that it's so long running well I mean, 20 volumes like for me is like a long running series it's uh, again similarly with which witchcraft, witchcraft works I, I don't have the motivation to persevere with it um, i'd rather spend my time reading something that i genuinely enjoy from the first couple of volumes so that's that um by the way i'm not i'm not talking about these in order in the order that i've read them i'm just they're just there so um Next thing, let's talk about Old Boy uh, by Garon Suchia and Nobuaki Minagishi. It's an eight volume series. I was very lucky to actually pick up all of the volumes here for a relatively decent price, save for the last one, uh, which I did regrettably pay over retail price for, but it is what it is. You know, I just wanted to finish it off. Um, and this is your atypical 90s neo noir crime thriller. Uh, if you've ever watched, you know those sort of films uh you know from the 90s then this has all the hallmarks of that you know very sort of atmospheric and lots of uh uh you know like this sort of thing you know where he's sort of deep in thought and he's got like a chiaroscuro of of uh atmosphere around him and the shade on his face and all that sort of stuff so you know it, it's let's give you a synopsis basically what it is Old Boy is about this guy on the cover here. Um, he is the old boy, I forget what his name is. Uh, and he was kidnapped and locked away in a room for uh, for 10 years and then let out randomly. And is tasked with, with, tasked with finding out the reason why and you know who committed this against him. You know, why was he locked up for so long? And, and who could possibly hate him enough to inflict you know this this level of torture on him because he didn't he, they, they just locked him up and fed him meals every day you know it wasn't you know, it wasn't tortured or anything like that it just it, it was the not knowing why he was there that was the most torturous aspect you know he's, he wasn't involved in, in in criminal activity or he didn't have any known enemies to speak of um so he was completely oblivious as to what he would you know what what he'd done uh, or what he'd apparently done, and then we're just let out randomly, um, tasked with trying to find out why. Uh, and it's a cat and mouse game between the main the main guy and the uh, the perpetrator, who who you do get to, uh, to to meet quite early on, pretty much in the first volume. In fact, it is in the first volume. It's a cat and mouse game between them, um, with uh, with the main character being given certain tasks and duties and and having certain it's just there's like a game element but the there are rules to the game um where if if the main character breaks those rules then he he will basically uh, fail at finding out the reason uh why he was locked away in the first place uh so it's you know him coming across subtle clues um you know going back through his memories you know through his chat all the way back to his childhood uh trying to piece together exactly who could have done this and and why uh 
and the journey is very much more interesting than the destination um i really 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 enjoyed this but i felt so deflated at the end and i'm not going to ruin the ending or anything but when you get to the ending you're just like was that it <laughs> come on now that's pathetic um you would expect there to be a much more grandiose reason um than what you get so so the ending is very lackluster but like i said the, the journey is you know the, the the piecing everything together is, is the fun part it's very urasawa-esque in, in in that regard and it, it's it's very rare to find a series that pulls off the the big reveal i find um you know the the fun is in finding out the clues and you know chasing down leads and you know coming across dead ends so okay let's start back let's, you know go back to square one you know that that's the fun part and you know I, I it's very rare that i've come across a series even urasawa uh, series like i even remember getting to the end of 20th century boys and being like mm, nah. but yeah do the, uh, there's a lot of urasawa influence in this i mean i think i mean at the time that this would have been published the authors really would have been contemporaries of urasawa so um and this is a very post gekiga uh so it's it's just it's very much of that style but if you were ever going to introduce yourself to, to any iteration of old boy then just watch the movie the the korean movie um it's so much better than than because that's adapt this is the original source material you know the movie is adapted from this and it just does it so much better so the movie will always trump the original uh, in my view especially now having finished it okay so that was old boy uh, let's have a Quick read of comments. Um, a lot of series like this have become unbearable in high sight. Uh, it's always gives me a sense of a bunch of forty-year-old dudes trying to figure out what kids find. But yeah, uh, that, yeah, I, I I agree with that. You know, it's, it's you know, old guys out of touch um, trying to find out what's now hip. Uh, yeah. Um, I think I saw a volume of Old by my local comic book shop. They only have one or two, though, and they do which was volume one, so kind of disappointing. You're not really missing out much. Uh, if you've seen the film, um, Doofy, then, then you, you've really seen the best iteration of it. Uh, I wouldn't even say that the manga is, is worth reading, considering the lackluster ending. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah, I'm gonna have the movie. The movie's excellent, it's just bloody fantastic. Uh, okay, now lowering the mood a little bit next thing i read was doll now don't let the cover fool you this was by far one of the darkest things i've read so far this year maybe in the last couple of years um maybe not as dark as devil man because devil man was pretty dark but doll this is a six volume series um i did briefly talk about this in one of my wrap-up videos last year at some point because i only had volume one and I, I liked it that much that I've been on the hunt for the remaining volumes and came across a decent um, a job lot of the rest of the volumes on eBay. So I picked them up um, a few months ago and just read them all straight away. And by God, does it, I mean, it gets darker than the first volume. Uh, but it's, it's basically a loose series of intertwining vignettes, uh, short stories about... Um, humanoid androids uh and, and how they interact with human uh, human civilization you know humanity they're, they're, they're not the androids that are built as built by this one particular corporation that build them as um like servants uh cooks housemaids um lovers you know there's like like a sex doll line um so they're very much created to fulfill um what humans need from them you know the sort of average joe person they're not uh you know they're not created to um, perform high functioning you know sort of important roles for the, for the betterment of mankind they're just there as a you know a, a commodity you know to get use out of um and it deals it, the, the the juxtaposition between the the innocence and uh purity of the titular dolls the androids themselves um 
juxtaposition between them and the capacity for evil that can be committed by human beings and hum human morality, morality uh, is what's explored throughout the six volumes. Uh, you know, it deals with really touchy subjects, uh, child abuse, um, uh, illegal sexual fetishes, uh, murder, uh, rape, every, every possible trigger word that you could possibly think of is covered um, to, you know, to one degree or another in this. But what I found really interesting was the overarching story that, that sort of uh, sprinkled throughout. Uh, I mean, it's not really the, it's absolutely not the main focus of, of it at all. Um, but the main story, if you could call it, is, is about a guy who is the son of the, the, the illegitimate son of the president of the company that builds these androids and he he's basically been um shunned excommunicated from from his family for um a bit because he was the illegitimate son and threatened um the uh inheritance and entitlements of the you know other children who were you know like the official official children so he he was uh, he's essentially disowned by his family and it becomes um like a hacker so basically what he does he he helps dolls escape um you know the company or, or helps people who found find other more illegal uses for the dolls and basically re rewires them to give them um more autonomy over themselves it's kind of like uh it, 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 if you play detroit become human you know the the game it, it's kind of like that uh or rather i, I guess you could say detroit become human is more like this because this is it's come before uh so that that's kind of like the overarching story with him and it, it culminates in like a really dramatic um sort of ending for, for him uh and considering that this is no holds barred and you know doesn't really shy away from very sort of controversial topics and making you feel uncomfortable you know i hope you can uh you know imagine the the lengths that it goes to to uh you know Sort of depict this main character's struggle and and what ultimately he uh, you know how ultimately he, uh, he he ends up because his goal is really the downfall of, of this company this company that has you know this company and his family you know the sort of tied part and parcel um you know the, his goal is is their downfall um and there's another couple of interesting elements in it as well with uh with do other dolls that are being created covertly uh, by this company as like extermination sort of droids like terminators who go around killing other dolls that have been hacked by this main guy so it's like another little like i said with old boy it's kind of like a little subtle cat and mouse game in this as well because they're trying to find him and apprehend him to you know stop him from modifying their uh, their androids um i think actually the even more so than the, the main sort of loose story the most interesting aspect of it is uh um is the doll some of the doll characters some of the android characters their sort of introspective view of who they are and what their purpose is and and whether or not they you know whether or not they have conscious feeling or whether or not it's just programmed you know just the the sort of similar things that you you, you know you, you, you hear in sci-fi uh stories dealing with artificial intelligence and things like that you know like what constitutes uh self you know what defines self um you know it, Sort of topics that are uh you know oversaturated i guess you can say like cyberpunk and and, and sci-fi stories but it's handled really well in this i mean this is a jose series um and i'm not too well versed in 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 reading jose and i haven't read that much jose but from the jose that i have read i found that they're very um character focused that's too much of a general term uh something more specific that i want to say um they're, they're, they're much more insular um in terms of how the characters are written um everything's very uh focused on you know in it's inward but insular in, inward looking rather than uh outward looking um that's the best way i can put it off the top, off the top, off the top of my head um and the androids considering that they are just you know automatons just robots uh 
them having these feelings and their own thoughts, their own conscious thoughts that are, uh, you know, um, uh, intimate and and uh, independent, uh, no, independent only to themselves. You know, they they, they have their own uh, thoughts and their own dreams and you know their own aspirations. It is interesting. Um, so I don't know if 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 you ever in the mood for reading something that's quite dark. Uh, this is very dark. Um, and it does it does go some dark places from what I recall of it. Then um, give it a shot. I mean, it's only six volumes, so you know you're not losing too much time. You know, if you do read it, you don't enjoy it as much as I did. Uh, let's see, how many have five more things to talk about? What, four and a half, rather, because one of them I'm still in the middle of reading. Um, let's talk about some Gekiga. Oh, this is more experimental, but uh, I read World Map Room by Yuichi Yokoyama. Uh, so this is the second thing I've read by him now. Uh, and this is a this is an author that I've avoided for the longest time just because I thought he was a little bit too out there. Uh, I mean, look at the artwork; it's just like geometric shapes, and I mean, it's just pure expression in its most honest form. Uh, but when I read Garden, which is another series by him, which is apparently like a prequel or sequel to this, I was pleasantly surprised at how much I enjoyed it just for its simplicity. Um, and this is very much uh in that same vein it, it is just freedom of expression that there is no story to this it's basically a group of guys go to a city comment on what they see uh, you see some landscapes and cityscapes they they're, they're guided through the city by by a tour guide they get on a boat uh, and then they get to a library um and there's like a like a, a map of the world in the library and they comment on it and have a little conversation and that's it and it's just it's just so it's so offbeat look at it, it's just you know there's an airport there's a train you know, they just comment on what they observe there's no rhyme or reason to it per se um you know the characters are just these sort of weird egg-shaped people they're not really human they're not really alien you don't know what they are you don't know where they are it's all it's all like a fever dream and I really like that. Uh, I really like that sort of sense of uh, ambiguity with you know the surroundings and, and and what's really happening and why it's happening and who these people are and you know the sort of uh, removal from from any sort of recognizable human form that that all of them have. It's, it's just it's just different. It's just really really different. And if you go into it just. With a completely open mind and taking it for what it is i think you know anyone can, can enjoy this there's a heavy focus as well on on the sense of uh, movement and composition and um yuichi yokoyama really loves uh putting in lots of uh sort of angled sound effects to sort of help with the motion and you know it's a very sort of kinesthetic um you know in that regard you know that it's very much a part of the characters and the story as the story is to uh, to the sound effects you know it's one of those it, 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 it's a manga that you read where you know you pay attention to the sound effects you know whereas sound effects are supposed to be there as like a, a, a as, as an adjunct to to the artwork to kind of give you a sense of um, the, the noise that's happening around the characters this is more presented directly to the reader that rather than it is you know the characters experiencing those sounds um so it's it's i don't know it just gives you a different perspective of of of, the, of, a, of a reading experience for manga it's it, it's a wholly different experience because i never usually pay attention to sound effects you know when i'm reading any other sort of series because it's just there it's it's not supposed to be noticeable um but the but the reverse is uh is, is the same for this it's almost like uh i mean i don't know i, I know like you do for you um you know, you're really into your music and that you you know generally speaking like when you when i listen to a band like i i, I like all of the instrumentation like you know, i would play pay attention to the bass the guitar the drums the, you know the vocals you know, anything like that but sometimes but that band that i don't like that much but i really like the bass hooks on it so sometimes i'll just listen to a band just for the bassist you know as an example uh, and that's kind of what this is for me you know i, I really like the composition 
the compositional aspects and you know the sort of sound effect design and things like that um everything everything else is sort of arbitrary uh you know the artwork is you can take it or leave it but compositionally from from, from an artist's perspective I, I i think it's brilliant so i highly recommend anything by Yuichi yokoyama um he does have a couple of other titles available from breakdown press and uh, there's another one coming out from another independent publisher um but yeah if, if you're into this sort of weird well, i'll show you some more artwork again you know just it's just weird fever dreamish incomparable to really anything else that that, that you would ever normally see uh give it a whirl yeah. and the books are beautiful as well i mean it's just got, it's got a nice sort of cover design it's very painterly and I mean, the guy's clearly got a, uh, a background with fine art. Um, so, yeah, it's cool. It's the cool person's manga. You know, only, only real manga collectors read this. Yeah. Uh, Kavor, hello. Yes, it has been a long time. Thank you very much for, for joining on. Um, I'm glad I'm doing this as well. I've just kind of done this on a whim. <laughs> You know, I felt energy, energetic today. I've just come out of a um, uh, a chat with I was having with a um, another another uh, person online. Uh, so I'm always, I'm already in a talkative mood. Doofy, uh, I'm going to read World Map Room. He looks amazing. I'm trying to explore more Gecky got authors. Yeah, man. I mean, th this is. I mean, when I when I say Gecky, I mean the author considers this Gecky, but it's not from like the 60s or 70s i mean this i think this was like maybe 10 or 15 years old in terms of you know he's still creating manga today because he's not a, you know he's, he's a young guy youngish guy uh okay um i'll talk about tezuka melody of iron and other short stories like i i always i'm a sucker when it comes to short story collections the the so so accessible and just so easily easily digestible um that i always sort of gravitate towards them as you can just you know pick up you know pick it up read a short story in 10 minutes and you know you, you've got a whole complete you know narrative um and then you can you know put it down for like a day and then pick it up the next day and then you read another story in 10 or 15 minutes and you've got a whole you know perfect uh you know complete story with a with a cherry on top um so that I, I love short story collections. Um, they're, they're they're not um, you, know, you don't expend a lot of mental en energy trying to, trying to get through them. But this was really really good. Um, this had a I remember reading this a couple of a couple of months ago, and uh, it was late at night, and I was just winding down for bed. It was like the last thing I read before I went to sleep. And uh, there's a particular story in this that had such an impact on me as I was reading. I was like, wow, this is really awesome. Really, really cool concept. And it had such an impact on me. It left such an impression on me, which is ironic, considering what the story is that I was about, that I'm about to tell you. It left an impression on me that it affected my dreams that night. Like, I dreamt about the, the, the story. Uh, it's never really happened to me before where I've, where I've read something and then it's directly affected uh, you know, my, my, my subconscious thinking. Um, so that's why I really love this. But the, the story in question, uh, it wasn't the titular, uh, the titular story. The titular story, Med Melody of Iron, is fairly average. The story that really impacted me was uh, what's it called? Ah, the White Shadow. And the premise of it, I mean, I won't spoil it, but I'll sort of give you the premise of what happens in like the first page. It's really short. I mean, it's only like 15 pages long or something. The premise is it's uh, it's a man and a woman, two lovers uh, who are who are um, trapped in the middle of the sea. The the boat's capsized, and um, the the man and woman they're, they're in the water, shop trying to scramble for something to hold on to. And out of nowhere, there's there's a bright flash of light, um, and that's the last time you ever see each other ever again. Fast forward like year, like a couple of years later. And the woman starts the, the woman survived okay. she's you know, carried on with her life obviously never saw her lover again so it's presumed that he passed away um but she started seeing images of him so the same image uh anytime she looks at a white surface she she she, she sees the the last 
image that she ever had of him and obviously that was him when he was suffering when he was drowning um and she, she, she can't get rid of it and it turns out that the the bright flash of light has acted like a like the flash of a camera and it's, it's imprinted um her last image of him on her retina so like literally this this dying man's last moments is physically imprinted on her retina so she literally cannot um like get rid of it it's, 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 it's there permanently so she just learns to live with it you know and, and almost like forms like a relationship with this image that she can't get rid of um and you know refers to him by name and you know just because slowly becomes comfortable with it it's a really strange story um and a, a, a really 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 good ending considering how short it was and i just thought it was a really creepy uh concept you know having someone's last dying moments physically burned into your eyes like not into, even into your memory but in your eyes so anytime you look at something it, you it literally is there uh it's such a strange strange concept and kind of terrifying as well so yeah i did have a dream about that it wasn't a nightmare it was just i just had a dream about it it was because it, it was really unnerving and unsettling but yeah tezuka is uh a, a true a true master of his craft do if you know you've been getting into tezuka as of late so um I know you can, you can probably attest to uh, what I'm saying. Um, but I would definitely recommend this 100%. I mean, like I said, a short story collection. The title um, uh, story is basically about um, a Japanese man who marries into the Italian mafia, uh, finds out some stuff that he really shouldn't find out, and ends up getting his arms cut off. So he goes to a surgeon for prosthetic arms um, so he can get revenge. Uh, and it's basically a tale of revenge. Let's take it or leave it, it's kind of average. Um, but just for that one story, The White Shadow, definitely recommend it. I'm trying to remember what the other story was in this. Let me see if I can remember just like the title. Uh, Revolution. What happened in that one? Uh, I don't know what happened in that revolution. Let's see. Oh. Uh, yeah, Revolution was good as well, actually. Um, yeah, a, a little bit of a time travel bender sort of thing. Um, I don't remember it as well as The White Shadow because it clearly didn't have that much of an imprint on me. But yeah, highly recommend Melody of Iron and other stories. Uh, let's have a look at the commentaries. Uh, I think it'd be interesting to see how modern authors interpret Gekiga. Hitherto, I've only read authors from the period itself. Mm. Yeah, uh, it's any 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 newer series that I've read. In fact, Manga Crash is doing that um, giveaway. Uh, that's a series that was published in Garo from one of Tatsuki Fujimoto's assistants, I believe, who's done it, who's drawn uh, that manga in a classical 60s 70s gekiga style even though it was published in 2014 uh, so, so that i think that's really interesting um i only learned that today myself because uh, uh, the dude who was talking to is portuguese as well and he's got that same volume um so i was, I was really interested to hear that but get modern gekiga or post gekiga um is it's a bit of a blend of ideas and and, and, and concepts because obviously Gekio was the sort of catalyst for more serious manga and obviously more sort of dramatic so i would say dramatic style uh, manga not lots of um you know children's whimsical sort of storytelling the instigate dramatic manga um which uh was the basis of more or less all manga to come so i guess Gekio manga um in its truest form is more of an obsolete term now i guess and anything that can be considered modern gekiga i mean i'm no historian or expert with this um but i would uh, i would surmise that anything that's considered modern gekiga would be more like post gekiga like kind of like what postmodernism is to modernism Mod modernism so you know as a movement catalyzed the artwork that was to, to come and postmodernism not only expanded on that but 
bended the rules, it, it repudiated what modernism was, right? Uh, I guess that you, you could say that's what Gekiga did for the manga before it. Um, but what is now considered Gekiga has repudiated what Gekiga was in the 60s and 70s and the 80s because it's just evolved so much. Um, now it's just completely experimental. Uh, anyway, uh, I'd love to do a video on that actually once I know more about it and understand it more. Um, uh, also, oh, I, one thing I know you did, you've started reading Yoshihiro Tatsumi, didn't you? You really, really enjoyed um, w which ones did you read? Did you read Goodbye and uh, Abandon the Old in Tokyo? Was it? I can't remember. I know you picked up some of uh, his works and you, you really enjoyed them. I'd love to uh, hear your thoughts on that one day. Uh, uh, I also picked up Melody of Iron. My copy's still sealed uh, because I've yet to get around to reading. Oh, nice. Nice. Uh, Zach. Uh, what other publishers release get to and underground manga? Um, I've gotten some from Drawn and Quarterly. Yeah, Drawn and Quarterly do, do a few. It's loads more. Um, I mean, there's Breakdown Press. I thought, just because I know I've got a really strange accent. Um, not everyone really understands me. So this Breakdown Press. Um, now, some of these publishers aren't exclusively manga or get here. Like a lot of them publish mostly Western comics. So I'm going to put in some publishers that. Uh, are known to publish some Gekiga in small amounts. So there's uh, New York Review Comics. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Retro Tip Comics. Hello Press. Um, there's a Glacier Bay, which is like a newer one. Um, the uh, Starfruit books, I haven't got any from them. No, they do. And a plethora of others. Um, I can't think of off the top of my head. But I hope that helps. Uh, Breakdown Press and um, Retrofit Comics, as well as Drawn and Quarterly, will probably be your best bets. Oh, also, Fanta Graphics. That's another big one. Fanta Graphics. Oh, and Fanta. Uh, I'm just one of one, which is a Canadian French publisher, I believe. But yeah, all, all of them publishers um, uh, publish Gekiga uh, to, to some to some degree. Um, yeah, Tezuka is brilliant. I already, I already own it, so I don't want to really say nice. Yeah, his more mature works are unparalleled. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd, any of Tezuka's works that I've read that I was shown in our show draw just not interested me at all. Like. Princess Knight and Triton of the Sea. They're just absolute snooze fests. Um, okay. Talking about Gekiga, um, I read Cigarette Girl uh, by uh, Masahi uh, Masahiko Matsumoto, and it has a forward by Yoshihiro Tatsumi, um, as they were contemporaries. They were like, they were good mates. Um, and this is a series of short stories uh, about um, everyday life for uh, single bachelors in Japan in like, post-war 60s and 70s and um, the, the the burdens of tradition versus the excitement of uh, progression um, you know, before the, the, the booming Japanese economy and it, it very much is a slice of life like a very early slice of life I guess you could call it uh, and the, the central sort of motifs that are scattered throughout the story, and there's only a couple of stories in this, but the central sort of motifs are, um, you know, young uh, young people struggling to find uh, love or, or sort of discovering uh, love in a new world that is unfamiliar to them, if that makes any sense. There's a funny story about a, a woman who goes around um, selling... Uh, condoms and like other birth control to to, to other uh, like single uh, to, to other young couples, um, and the, the the joke around that is the fact that she knows so much about condoms, but she herself is single and never you know had anyone to use uh, a condom with. So you know she she she's finding difficulty in finding a partner herself, but yet she goes around helping other partners. You know, live 
you know, successful lives in the bedroom. Uh, so it's pretty funny and quirky, and like the the artwork is very uh, very reminiscent of Shigeru Mizuki. Like if you ever read like Kitaro uh, Kitaro or or anything by Mizuki, then the the the, the style will be somewhat familiar to you. Again, you know this artist was a contemporary of those kind of people. So, uh, but this is a, a really nice book actually. Uh, it's by Top Shelf Productions. So it was the same publisher that published Axe Alternative Manga. Uh, unfortunately, this is out of print. So I don't know how readily available this would be to come across. Um, I was lucky that I picked this up recently. Um, but yeah, for what it was, it was it was very enjoyable from what I remember of it. I think it, it, a second read is definitely required for me to really solidify my thoughts on it um, and you know give a review over and above just my surface sort of feelings about it which is essentially what you're getting now this is just off the cuff i haven't really sort of you know considered it that much um in fact, i'll just read the back of it that'll probably give you an indication as to um what it's more about uh here are the quiet evocative urban dramas of masaha masahiko matsumoto one of the leading lights of japanese alternative comics movements known as the akiga uh, oh that doesn't tell you anything about it, actually um there we go a shared cigarette offers a momentary connection. A closet hides the evidence of an embarrassed bachelor's laziness. A single woman, not getting any younger, sifts through letters from would-be husbands. And a new couple buys two train tickets to anywhere. So just, you know, whimsical tales about nothing um, that are wholly relatable, you know, every, everyday life. It's a slice of life, in undiluted slice of life, I would say this. Uh, this is so uh give it a whirl if, if you see this on the shelf definitely buy it good uh okay two more things to talk about uh, uh yeah you're welcome Zach, not a problem uh it's interesting to see how tezuka birth a lot of shonen trust but at this point i've become so numb to them that they don't have the same impact as they oh absolutely i was the same when i read um uh, devil man like considering how good how influential go and guy has been on you know um you know subsequent sort of horror series that that impact uh for some of the some of the things didn't didn't land with me either particularly like the monster designs the story um and the, the the shocking elements of it absolutely did uh but yeah i i, I agree it's it's difficult to it, it's easy to appreciate um you know the uh the elements that uh, the tropes that were pioneered and 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 how the you know where they came from uh, but the impact certainly you know wouldn't be there it's almost like hearing a really really funny joke for like the 50th time you know you know why it's funny you know how clever the joke is but it you know, just doesn't land because you've seen it all before you know you've heard the joke a million times maybe that's not really enough to comparison but uh, i guess as i can think of um okay the penultimate thing i've got to talk about is another gekiga by a really famous um author one of the uh progenitors pioneers um of uh serious sort of samurai period pieces uh but this isn't a samurai well it's actually it's a um, color of rage uh, written by kazuo kazuo koike um the author of lone wolf and club and all those other samurai things like samurai Kushner and Pathra, the assassin and whatnot uh, the artwork in this is done by seisaku kano that's somebody i'm not familiar with and uh, this is basically set in edo period japan where a japanese uh, two slaves uh, a japanese man and uh, a black man um wash up off the coast of japan um and try to basically survive it's basically a tale of survival and considering the um you know how homogenous japan is you know uh, ethnically homogenous you know, it, it's it's uh, you know the japanese locals and other sort of enemies and friends that the meek are all, uh, meets are always fascinated by uh, i think his name's king the basically the black guy in this who becomes uh like a um, a samurai you know he, he learns the, the life of a samurai along with his friend uh george um who is obviously japanese uh and th there are a lot of elements of 
like seventies black exploitation in this that you can see. You know, Kazuo Koike was directly influenced and you know, influenced by and, and lifted from you know probably films that he watched around that time. You know, when they were popular. Uh, I believe this is from the seventies. Um, it's sort of quintessential Gekiga style, as you can see. The artwork's lovely. Um, but I don't know. I just didn't really like it. I, I think it relied too heavily on. You know, oh look, King is it's a black guy in a manga. <gasps> oh, this is different. You know, it it relied too heavily on that. Like it was like King as a black character was a uh, like the token black character almost, and it was written that way. Like almost, uh, I get the impression that it was written that way unintentionally, um, and and with a uh, you know with good intentions because he's not by any means a, a bad character in terms of you know how he's uh, you know how he's portrayed. But certainly, how it's written, um, and and the, uh, the 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 novelty of who he is, not only to the other characters, you know, because like I mentioned before, you know, Japan is very homogenous, um, you know, but he's also fetishized, um, and I think that fetishization unknowingly also comes from the author, uh, you know, the both authors. Um, so it just, I mean, I'm I don't really care about. Uh, representation or anything like that i care about story but um i really feel that the the authors here were sort of i don't know maybe a little bit out of the depth i don't know it just it didn't feel authentic at all um it felt like more the it felt like like not only the author, not only the characters in the story but also the no, uh, the authors were uh, novelizing um you know a black character. I mean, the book is called Color of Ridge. Um, it's like all about this, you know, big, angry black guy. Um, and he, you know, sort of relies on like stereotypes, um, you know, uh, about like black men that might not uh, resonate very well with readers, you know, contemporary readers today. Um, and I know it's a touchy subject for a lot of people, you know, like race things like that and sort of representation particularly within manga where you know a lot of uh characters i mean look at you the average manga character even even if they've got like a japanese name and it's a manga set in japan you know all the characters have got like blue eyes and blonde hair you know no character really looks japanese you know, no anime character really looks japanese if you think about it and it's rare that you come across um you know a character who's more uh i guess you could say uh like racially on point um but you know i i think as like a piece of history and how um manga authors were at this time i guess attempting to uh to be more diverse i mean i don't really know what sort of you know prompted i don't know what the reason really was for the authors wanting to write you know write this um but it's not very good uh, and I'm not offended by it. I don't. I'm not offended by anything. I just didn't. Um, I, I just thought it was. You know, there were a lot of moments in it where I just rolled my eyes, like, "Oh, well, I know what you're trying to do here." You know that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, it's not something I particularly recommend. Uh, and I did go into it knowing that it wasn't very well rated. Like a lot of people generally say, from you know the reviews that I've read, that it is just, you know, it's it, it's bad. You know, it, it's pretty bad. Um, relies too heavily on stereotypes and fetishization um, and it's it's yeah it, it doesn't really know what purpose it serves you know it, I, it, the book itself is confused um, and you could tell that the authors were, 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 were not really sure of why they were writing it or you know what what message ultimately that, that they want to send with this um, so in that regard yeah, you know, it's not again. It's not something I recommend. Um, but I'm glad I read it anyway, just so I can say that you know I have read it and I do actually have an opinion on it. Okay, now um, the uh, final thing that I, that I'm reading rather is uh, Dementia Twenty One by Sh Shintaro Kago. This is Volume Two. Um, yeah, it's uh, this is the second Shintaro Kago work that I've read now. The first one being Super Dimensional Love Gun. And uh, it's definitely toned down. Um, 
you know, compared to like this is very toned down compared to super dimensional love gun. Dimension 21 basically is the premise being is female character on the cover here who's a uh, care worker for uh, like a elderly home residents. So she looks after like old people who are infirm and you know can't look after themselves anymore. And uh, each each old person that she looks after <laughs> has some sort of weird quirk, whether that be a, a superpower or or weird family members or you know inadvertent powers that spell disaster for the world, and and it's up to her to try and resolve it. Uh, in order to make the you know the old person feel as comfortable as they can, and so that she gets a good review, so she gets you know a promotion. So it, it's very comedic. I mean, if you've if you read anything by by Shintaro Kago, then you kind of know his like offbeat style. Um, it, it is there are a couple of moments in it that do, did genuinely make me chuckle, and obviously I am still reading it. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what's going on here. This isn't even a chapter I've read yet, but it's like some old people on like a like a freaking roundabout. I don't know. It's just it's very it, it, it goes for that really sort of deadpan um you know like roll your eyes, silly humour. Uh it, it's like some absolute bizarre sort of moments in this and it, it there's no story to it, it's just you know, each chapter is its own um individual story uh but as an example there's there's one old person that she's looking after who um who's, who's suffering with senile dementia um and the <laughs> anything that she forgets ceases to exist in the real world so so the main character like her her job is to stop her from forgetting stuff so <laughs> like for example like she forgets who like her, her her children are so all of her children disappear so like all of like her remaining relatives as well as uh the the main girl are trying to find ways to basically halt the the progression of her dementia in order so, so that you know like everyone in the world see, that doesn't cease to exist and it gets absolutely ridiculous like some, you know she, she ends up forgetting what airplanes are for example so like an airplane disappears out of the sky but then all the people are still on the aeroplane, so they just like fall to their deaths because she forgot what an aeroplane was. So you know, it's just silly stuff like that. It's really weird, wacky humor. Um, but if you know Shintaro Cargo, then you know some of it's pretty dark. You know, it does like up to that. You know, don't give a shit uh, how you feel, uh, how uncomfortable this might you know, make you feel. Humor. Um, yeah, you know, for that it, it's 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 enjoyable. Um, you know, I'm still enjoying it. Uh, I'm still reading, obviously. Uh, the last story I read was basically about a a, a grandpa who he, he himself had loads of kids, like he had like twelve kids, and each of those twelve kids had, you know, twelve kids. Um, so like he's got like hundreds and hundreds of of grandchildren and great grandchildren, like literally like thousands, like at, at one point, and and they're all uh, they're all chasing him down for birthday money and. <laughs> Like he, he, he's like hiding, like in a like he's like hiding like behind like a car or an in dustbin or something, and like this this wave of like babies and children will just like like flood over him. <laughs> they just completely naked, completely strip him there. So it's just uh, bizarre, strange humor, you know, toilet humor, and it, it was pretty much what I expected uh, of uh, Shin Tarakago um, going in. So. Yeah, if you're into that sort of stuff, then give it a whirl. I mean, I mean, look at these beautiful books, you know, from from, from the graphics. I, I do particularly like these, um, like halfway between soft cover and hard cover. Like it's a rigid back, but it's still like a soft book. Because so it, it's got the sturdiness and rigidity of a hard cover, but the flexibility, um, and and ease of holding, as a as a soft cover. So you get the best of both worlds. And it's you know really high page quality and everything like that you know um, beautiful sort of cover design um, the only bad thing really i suppose is the price but, you know, sacrifice has got to be made right but yeah that's uh that's been everything that i've read not a lot admittedly over the past couple of months uh you know, a few books and other things um 
But yeah, uh, does anybody have any questions or anything or anything that they want to add before I wrap up? Uh, thankfully, this has only been a hour long one, almost coming up to an hour. So that's I'm, I'm making good time. Uh, usually, these historically have been two or three hours long, and I've throat's been absolutely dead by the end of it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try to be more consistent with my uploads. Uh, I do ideally want to do these on a monthly basis, but you know, the start of the year has been. Uh, um, busy. Uh, I'm struggling to find any Yuji Yokoyama works online. I'll I'll send some links to you, Goofy, because uh, there are a few still available. Like World Map Room, I still got that for a, for a decent price. Um, I mean, there's only maybe about four or five of his works that are decently priced. Like a lot of the works that were published by a Picture Box um, that went out of business are just astronomically high. Um, even I'm struggling to come across them, but I've got. There's also um, French publishers who publish a lot of his work as well, and some of those works are wordless, textless. So I've got a French manga of his um, that, uh, that I just recently bought for a decent price. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll I'll send a list to you of things that I know are available, and then you can check them out. Uh, but yeah, um, thank you, all six or seven of you who are watching. Um, thanks for sticking around. Uh, I'll probably see you next month with uh, probably even less <laughs> to talk about. Uh, but until then, um, stay safe, uh, keep reading, and uh, yeah, peace out.